Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a large phone lot I purchased online. We're going to see what I received for my money and whether any of it actually works and can be repaired. You can see I got a wide variety of different devices in different conditions, including ones that are smashed, look like they've been run over, and even a Samsung with an exploded battery. We've also got a Blackberry and a couple of other older Motorola smartphones. While these phones all came from the same seller, I actually purchased two lots of phones. The first one coming in at 118 Australian dollars, including postage. This listing consisted of 10 devices from Google, Samsung, and some company called Xiaomi. Well, at least I believe that's how it's pronounced. These devices were very poorly packaged, simply just being thrown into a plastic bag with no protection. I'm gonna start by pulling out the devices first before we get into testing them. With the first lot unpacked, it's time to open the second parcel. This lot I purchased for only $20. It was listed as various Motorola phones, although the reason I purchased this wasn't even for any of the Motorola phones included. It turns out this lot also included a very unique phone I've been looking for, the BlackBerry Priv. It's the only Android slider phone that I know exists. Unfortunately, due to the bad packing by the seller, the phone got a little scratched up. But regardless, we now have all of the phones unpacked. So this is the stack of everything I got in the two tech lots. So let's take a closer look to see exactly what was included. I got two Google Pixel 3s and a Google Pixel 3a. All three Pixel phones have cracked display glass with the two Pixel 3s having a cracked rear panel. For the Samsungs, we've got a J5, an A20, an S8, an S7 Edge, a J2 Pro and an S4. These phones have had various degrees of abuse by their previous owners. It looks as though the S8 has been run over with a car, the J5 having a missing display, and the A20 appearing to have gone up in flames at some point. We also have a wide variety of Motorola phones, just like the second parcel was described as having. Although these don't interest me too much, we will still see if they do power on. These appear to be very early Android smartphones. Of course, last but certainly not least is the BlackBerry, the reason I brought the whole second parcel for. Starting with the phones from the second parcel, I'll be testing if any of them show signs of life. Starting with the Motorola's, we can see all they do is appear to light up with a charging LED, indicating they have some kind of life. Although nothing appears on screen for most of them, as they're likely completely out of charge. Most importantly, I need to test the BlackBerry. After plugging it in, nothing happened for a few seconds until surprisingly the display lit up with the battery charge icon. After letting the phone charge for a while, I was able to power it up. This is one of the very few Android BlackBerry phones, complete with its own slide out keyboard. There is no other phone quite like the Priv. After it powered on, I could see that it was already reset. So a quick setup later and it appears to be somewhat functional. I was amazed that the display is still working with the massive impact it has suffered. This phone will definitely make it into its own video at some point when I fully restore it. Coming across to the other group of phones, I'm going to plug in some chargers and see what happens. All these devices were sold as untested and for parts only, so I'm not sure what to expect. The first phone to light up is one of the Google Pixels, showing the battery flat icon. The next is the Xiaomi, which flashes the boot screen. After letting the devices charge, we also see the S7 Edge come to life. However, it isn't charging the battery. The Xiaomi and one of the Google Pixels also appears to be having battery issues as they shut off immediately if unplugged. Plugging in my voltage meter in line with the charger, we can see the first Google Pixel all the way on the left isn't drawing any current, which is a bit strange and indicates that the phone isn't receiving any power. The second Google Pixel appears to be taking power but isn't charging the battery, so it sounds like it has a faulty battery. The third Pixel appears to be charging and actually working, same goes for the J5, and for that S8 that looks like it got run over, it appears like it's also taking current, but it doesn't appear to be turning on. I can tell this as the other phones are drawing about an amp when they're charging the battery. As for the Pixel that wasn't drawing any current, I had the idea of placing it on a wireless charging coil, and sure enough, all that was wrong is the USB-C connector isn't functioning. So after a good charge, it booted right up. 
It was locked with a passcode, so I went and wiped the device to remove all the previous owner's data. After following through the setup, this Pixel was good to go. Of course, it's still going to need a new display and a new back, but it's not looking too bad. It's running Android 9 from August of 2019. The next phone we're going to take a look at is the Galaxy S7 Edge. I left this phone to charge overnight, but still, it did not power on. I did notice that the back panel was slightly lifted from the housing, which hints to me that the battery inside is slightly expanded. This could be why it's not charging, as the battery itself is just faulty. So I'm going to use a heat plate to get the back panel off so we can take a closer look at the battery. Now if you don't have a heat plate like this and you're trying to perform a repair on a Galaxy like this one, you can actually use a heat gun, a hairdryer and various other methods to get inside. After the back of the phone had been heated up, I could use some plastic picks to separate the back glass from the frame. Now luckily there's no cables under this like in the S8, so I can just remove it with ease. Next, I'm going to need to remove the several Phillips screws inside to remove the wireless charging coil. With that out of the way, we can finally access the battery. Disconnecting it, I'm going to grab a test battery here to see if this device shows any signs of life. Pressing and holding the power button, I saw nothing on the display. However, the LED status light lit up, as well as the navigation buttons, which hints to me that the display is just dead. So I'm going to need to transplant the motherboard into a test housing. This housing will contain another cracked display, although it does function, and I'll be able to test out this phone to see if the brains of it are actually still working. So I'll simply need to disconnect all of the flex cables, remove the front facing camera, and lift the motherboard out of place. Bringing it across to my test housing, we can slide it back in, route all the cables through the motherboard and connect them up. This doesn't have to be fully installed as we're only going to be testing it in this frame. Installing the battery, I can flip it around and press and hold that power button. You can see this time round, we get a display and the device appears to be functioning. Just like the other phones, it's locked with a passcode, so I'll need to do a factory reset. It appears this phone will be working however, and I can fix it up later on down the track. Next up, we're going to take a look at this Galaxy S4. Similar to the S7 Edge, its navigation buttons light up, but the display remains dead. Now luckily, I happen to have a spare S4 display that I pulled off of an old phone that I replaced the screen on. So it is cracked, but it does still function. So this is going to be perfect for this phone, as not only am I going to be able to test it, but I can leave it on there, and this will give this phone a new lease of life. I probably won't actually fix this up fully, I'll just probably sell it on eBay for someone else to mess around with and pop a new screen on it. So I'll need to remove the back panel, remove the screws and take out the motherboard. Taking out the headphone jack, I can then remove the camera and the earpiece from the mid frame. I can't forget that vibration motor as all this will need to be transferred across to the donor frame. I'll also need to transfer across the charging port which is very vital on the Galaxy S4 as you don't want to mix up the model numbers of the charging port as it actually can stop the phone from booting. Connecting it up into place, I can reinstall the headphone jack and the vibration motor before reinstalling the motherboard. Pressing it down into place, I can reinstall the camera and the earpiece as well as the little cover that secures it all down into place. Reconnecting the flex cables, I noticed I accidentally trapped the antenna cable, although that's no big deal as I can simply pull that out from underneath and reconnect it. Installing the two Phillips head screws, I can clip on the mid frame and the speaker back onto the phone. Lastly, I'll need to reinstall all the Phillips screws, securing everything down into place, reinstall the battery and the back panel. Just like the other phones, I'll run it through a factory reset to make sure there's no user data on the phone. Lastly, I want to have a look at the Galaxy S8 that appears to have been run over. It's completely shattered on the back with the display's front glass completely missing and a bend on both sides. Although I managed to restore my S8 which was in a similar condition, this one might have gone a little too far. I won't be opening it in this video, but connecting a charger, the charge LED never appears and the device makes a high pitched sound when the power is connected. So this is what we got. 
For our working devices, we have an old Motorola phone, which I've yet to reset. I'm not quite sure on the model, but I believe it is an MB501. The second is also an old Motorola phone, running a very early version of Android. And in the bounce section, it says firmware version is 2.1, which I'm assuming is Android 2. The phone even has a little scroll ball, which can be used to navigate various menus. The next Motorola phone is a Moto E. And of course, we've got the Google Pixel 3. We also have a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, which I have yet to set up. It is running Android 7.0. And lastly, a Galaxy S4 running Android 5. For the devices that we can't test, but I have a very strong feeling that I can get these working, we have the Xiaomi A1, which is looking a lot like an iPhone 7 Plus. It appears to have a battery issue. We have the J5, which is actually on, but has no display. For the Google Pixel 3a, this is also working, shows up in my computer, but the display is completely dead. For the other Pixel 3, it appears to be having a battery issue as it only turns on when the power is connected and immediately shuts off when I remove the power cable. As for the other Motos and the Samsung J2, I haven't really been able to test these devices as the J2 itself is missing the battery and that display will definitely be dead as it's cracked underneath. As for the Motos, one of these turns on but the LCD is completely obliterated and the other one doesn't turn on. I will probably end up selling these on eBay for parts. As for the S8 and the A20, I'm going to be leaving the A20 for a future video as the battery is exploded in it I think that deserves a video of its own. The S8 I will try and fix up off camera and if I ever get it working, well I'll post a video about it. But don't have your hopes up. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Tech Lot playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for some helpful tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.